in today's session of operating system we'll be moving on to the next topic which is nothing but message queues so when you go for a message queues as we are dealing with inter process communication here we have already seen how a pipe is being used for transferring the data from one process to the other process so same is the case when you go for a message queue as the name implies you will be given a queue where the total messages whatever you want to send the sending process making use of a module will place the messages onto the message queue and the same will be taken by the receiving process and here the type designates the type of each message will be given a type and that type value will be a long integer value which will be seen when we actually go for programming and this is the actual message which you want to send now when you go for your message queues the first step you need to do is we have to go for creating a message queue or you can go for using any of the existing message queue and for that we have a predefined function which is nothing but message get and once a message queue is been created you can go for dumping the data onto the message queue or write the data into the message queue by using message sent read the data by the receiving process using message receive and you perf you can perform the control operations when you go for message control coming to the first predefined function which we have seen for creating a message queue it is nothing but msg stands for message and get stands for get so when we go for message get here it takes two parameters one parameter is nothing but when you want to create a message queue each queue will be given a key so you can give your own predefined value as a key or we can go for using ipc private which will be going for generating a unique key for the message queues that are been created so this will be generated automatically by the system or you can just give some random number in place of the key and this is a flag and the second parameter coming to the flag you can this indicates that you go for either creating creating a particular message queue if it is not existing if the if it exists it will not go for creating anyone and this particular ipc exclusive this is used for creating a message queue with the permissions which are nothing but 0666 which stands for you are providing read and write permissions to the group owner and the user and this zero indicates the octal number on successful completion of this it gives you a non negative integer value which is nothing but the id of the message queue on failure it returns minus 1 coming to your message sent so this will be actually done at the sender side where it wants to go for putting up a message so the first parameter is nothing but the id of the queue in which you have to place the message so this is a pointer to the actual message what you want to place it in your queue and this indicates the size of the message and when i say the size of the message as we have seen earlier the message will be divided into two parts first indicates the type of the message and m is your actual message so when you go for your message type message uh, message size it takes the actual value of the message the type value will not be considered so while calculating the number of characters it only calculates the actual message and this is nothing but your flag and the common flags which we can go for using is ipc no wait which causes i mean which will make the function to return immediately to the calling function if the queue is full because you cannot go for creating a new message into the message queue on uh, success of this it returns a value zero whereas on failure it returns minus one coming to this we have already seen how to create a queue how to send the data now it is the uh, now the next chance is given to the receiver so which has to take the data so from which queue it has to take the data that id is to be provided and this is the pointer to the buffer where you have to take the message which is been provided by the sender and put it in this particular value so this is a pointer to the buffer where you want to dump your data and this is same the size of your message excluding the type and this indicates the type of your message actual type of the message as i told you it should be a long data type and this is your message flag which will be used and if you don't want to use any of the flags you can just indicate it here as zero whereas the common message flags are nothing but here if the message type whatever you want to receive the receiver wants to receive a specific message type and if it is not available you don't wait for it but you stop your execution and when you go for the other flag message except uh, other than the type specified you will be specifying some message type so other than but particular type you can receive any other message 
and this message no error it indicates the size of your message if the message you want to receive is greater than the size which you have specified here it only takes that part, uh, part of the message on success of it it just gives you a value the size of the received message otherwise it tends to minus one and coming to the type of the message as i told you you give some integer value here so if i specify if my value is zero if i specify my value is zero it means that you have your queue so whatever message is present in the queue at the starting location you just take that particular message and if you are giving a value to your message type as something greater than zero so whenever you are sending a message you even specify the type to it so if i can mention any number 12 13 14 like this so here if i indicate 14 you will be only receiving the message which is of the type equal to 14 and if your message type is less than zero means that you are giving a negative value for example if my message type is minus three so you only take the absolute value of this so what would be the absolute value of this it is one two three so if i have the messages ranging from one two three four five five message types i only take up the first three messages which are less than or equal to this absolute value and the one which is present at the front end so that particular message will be accepted so receiver has an option as what particular message it can actually receive from the sender the next operation we have here is your message control so when you go for your message control this is nothing but the id of the message which you are sorry id of the message queue what type of command you want to go for mentioning it and here you have a predefined structure related to the related to your message control and this is just a pointer to that particular structure you need not declare a structure here we can just make use of it and coming to the int command here in place of the command we can go for mentioning ipc this is related to your status this is ipc set ipc stands for inter process communication and ipc rmid ipc status is nothing but you you have your kernel operation right you have your kernel so whatever values are present in your kernel the same values will be dumped into this particular structure ipc set is nothing but in the structure you have many fields and you want to set some of the fields in the structure we can do go for using it and once your operation is done you don't want to use your queues you can go for just deleting it so this is a predefined structure which is already available and these are your parameters so you can just go for uh, mentioning what permissions you have what is the time of the message sent what is the time of the message received what is the time of the last change of the message how many bytes are being sent number of messages in your message queues number of bytes allowed in the queue so all these are predefined parameters which they have so even you have the pid process id of the last message that is sent and pid of the last message that is received on success it returns a value 0 and on failure it returns a value minus 1 so having gone through the four commands uh, which are predefined commands if you want to send a message from the sender to the receiver so this is a program which we will be using it so these are the header files which are required and in structure as i told you when, when you go for a message message has two parts one is related to your type of the message and one is related to the text what you want so we'll declare it so message is divided into two parts and here i'm going for using a key a predefined key so here msg uh, get message get i'm producing the same key with all the read write permissions and you are creating a queue if it is not existing and if your message it returns a value zero less than zero it is an error otherwise you can just go for sending a message so here you are mentioning the type of the message msg is a variable related to your structure type and this is the type of the message so one and against one what is the message you want to send hello this is a message you are just copying this particular value into this msg dot m text which is a variable in the structure and now if you this you are sending it so when you are sending it what is that you are sending q the pointer to your actual message and what is the length of your message and if this this is your command value if you don't want any command flags to be used you can just read it as zero if it is less than zero there is an error otherwise you can just go for sending the message so you can even go for sending multiple message first message type is one whereas the message type is two so you'll be just sending the messages to you so this is to be done at the sender side so all these operations are done at the sender side now we'll see what happens at the receiver side so the same structure will be used here we'll only concentrate on this so here i'm just going for give, creating a key once again 
based on this now you want to receive the message so when you want to receive the message you are specifying the same id a pointer where you can store the message that is being received and this is the actual size of the text and here i don't want to mention any of the flags so you are mentioning it as zero so if this operation is failure i mean if this value is less than zero it is a failure otherwise you can just receive the message and print it onto the monitor now other than these functions we have even seen a message control so what is happening in your message control here as soon as we have read the message you don't want it to be included so you can just go for removing that particular queue which has been created now coming to the next parameter here it is nothing but your shared memory so in ipc we have seen mess pipes message queues and this is your shared memory as you already seen you have your pipe and you have your queues here right and the other one is nothing but your shared memory so in the shared memory you allocate a part of the memory so where process a can use the same location process b also can use the same location so any modifications done by other one is visible to one another so you need not explicitly tell but when we were using this queues or message queues what was happening is there is a involvement of the kernel so even though i say that sender is putting the data into the queue and the receiver is taking the data from the queue there is an involvement of the kernel so the first kernel will read the data from the file and writes it into the buffer so i mean if you have a client and server it reads the input file writes the data into the message queue similarly it receiver will read the data from the message queue and writes it into the output file so totally you are making two read operations and two write operations where depending for one message to be uh, sent from sender to receiver we are going for two read and two write operations so which will be very difficult when as the number of messages between the sender and receiver increases because there is an involvement of the kernel in between to overcome that particular problem we go for shared memory now coming to your shared memory the predefined functions which we use is your shm stands for shared memory and get same as your message here also you go for creating a shared memory this is the id of it and you specify what is the amount of memory you want to allocate it for your shared and this designate your uh, shared memory flag as i told you you can create a shared memory if it is not existing otherwise you go for creating an exclusive shared memory if uh, you are creating it for the first time along with the permissions on success it returns the identifier of your shared memory segment or error it returns minus 1 coming to shared memory so you have just created a shared memory with some particular location 1000 so now you have to attach this shared memory segment to the memory id or uh, shared memory id to the you have your process right now you have allocated this 1000 as a shared memory so this process if i have two process so these process have to know where is the shared memory right so you have to attach this shared memory location to the process so this stands for shared memory attachment so here the id of the shared memory what you get on creating the shared memory this is a pointer to this particular address and you even have a flag so this particular flag indicates that whether you it is typically zero but you can even specify that this is only for read only means that you cannot change the data which is present in this particular shared memory as it implies you are attaching it it returns the address of the attached shared memory as on failure it returns you minus 1 coming to shared memory detachment here once your operation is done you don't want that particular shared memory location to be attached to this process you want to uh, remove this particular link for that we go for shared memory detachment where you only specify the address so that particular address will not be attached to this particular process so no longer it can dump the data into this on success it returns a value 0 on error it returns you minus 1 you even have a shared memory control operations where you can specify the id of the shared memory and here you specify the type of the command so these are the different types of the commands as i told you in the previous case of message queue here also you can have a structure and if you want the status of the structure values to be loaded with the kernel values then you go for ip state otherwise if you want to set some of the variables in this particular structure ipc set if you want to delete the shared memory which is been done you can go for rmid on success it returns a value 0 and otherwise it returns you minus 1 so these are all the variables that are present in your structure so size of the segment last attachment value detachment pid was created and all those operations
So coming to the programming part of this, you when you so go for seeing this. Now here you are just going for creating a shared memory, shared memory with a key, and this is a size and what are the permissions you are creating. And error you will go for just uh, removing it or uh, you go for coming out of the program. You attach it to your shared memory, the ID of it, and you don't want to specify any of the addresses, so it can be zero zero. And after you attach it, if you want to write some data, so you are just writing the data. So what is the data? You are just copying the data. So whatever you have here, the hello world value will be copied into your data. And this is the size of it. What what is the size of that particular thing? Maximum size you can go for specifying. After you dump the data after the attachment, now you have just copy the data into the shared memory. Now. At the after when you want to read the data, you go for reattaching the same thing. You perform a read op. This is for just writing the data. You are attaching it. Similarly, for reading the data, you again attach it. Go for reading the data from the specified thing. Once you have done reading the data, you can go for using control operations. Where in the control operations, you specify that the shared memory is to be reviewed. So you go for just reading the data from the shared memory. So where is the data stored here in this variable data? So you can just read that particular data attached to the shared memory. Now coming to the last one here, IPC status commands. As we have seen in the shared memory message queues or in your pipes, when you go for having uh, as shared memory control, which has an attribute known as inter-process communication status. So when you go for inter-process communication status, as I told you, it is used to fetch the status of your shared memory segment. So in this particular thing. When you go for using this, this is an ID of your shared memory, the command, whatever you want to use. In the place of the command, we have to specifically use IPC status, and this is a structure. So, when I am using the status, what all the status information you are getting, whatever variables are being provided in the structure, all the information you will be getting using this particular command. Similarly, when you go for your message queue, also you have message control. And same thing in place of CMD, if you are using IPC stat, it means that all the data which is present in the structure will be displayed back to the user. And similarly, to uh, coming to your semaphores, you even have an IPC stat. Coming uh, the status information that can be run is use what is the size of your semaphore, the last operation performed, and the number of operations. Now we'll be seeing the next uh, uh, as we are coming. Uh, at the end of the inter-process communication, we go for seeing deadlock in the next class.